What is up dudes, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another episode of YouTube Pro Cycling and in this one I do want to start by saying massive GG to Benji for a fantastic Giro d'Italia. Micah really unlucky to go down a couple of times uh, but you did really well to get back to 7th place, uh, really good recovery right there and I must say I really enjoyed watching the videos as well so great job mate. So looking at the Kanza, we are now really into the second half of the season. We've had one Grand Tour, we've had many of the classics as well, and we're now really in the build-up to the Tour de France. And that starts today with the Criterium de Dauphiné. I think I'm going to do about six stages, and then Blackwall will finish the race, as well as start the Tour de Suisse. Benji will then finish the Tour de Suisse, and then we have the National Championships. Oh my word, that was so worrying. I just got an email. Sebastian Milano is injured and he is obviously our main sprinter for the Tour de France this season. Thankfully, it's just a grazed knee, so he should be fine. So we have had some developments in the dossiers uh, since the last episode that I did forget to mention at the beginning, but you can see I've added four guys. We had a few more points, so I added Higita, a very good young climber. Magnus Court Nielsen, I think a very strong rider. Also Timo Rosen, because I think we had a few requests for that. He's added back in, as well as Jonas Vingegaard. So I tried to spread the points out pretty evenly across some strong riders. So you can see the riders we currently have um, down for dossiers. But if you guys have any requests for riders we should try to sign, definitely let us know in the comments. So I have done a bit of planning. I'm going to do the Tour de France, so I've chosen our team for that race. We did talk about it at the beginning of the season, myself, Benji and Blackwall, um, and it's pretty much the team we decided back then. So we've got Patrick Conrad, Van Garderen and Milano as the three main leaders. We also have Burson Hagen, Luis Leon Sanchez, uh, Benjamin Toma, Tobias Foss and Stefan de Bod. And the Dauphiné obviously is a big build-up race for the Tour de France, as well as the Tour de Suisse to be fair. And I've split the Tour de France squad mainly going to the Dauphiné. Conrad will go to Tour de Suisse, I think. Um, but mostly the Tour de France team will be going to the Dauphiné bar Patrick Conrad. So let's take a look at the Criterium de Dauphiné. Of course, eight stages coming up in this one. And I think I'm going to do six today. So we start with this hilly stage. Quite an interesting one. I think a lot of sprinters will probably survive most of those hills. Stage two and plenty more hills then. I think this will be more selective and much less likely that the sprinters will survive in the peloton. Stage three, definitely one for the sprinters on paper. We will see how that plays out on the roads. Moving on to stage four and it is a individual time trial. 26 kilometers certainly could be a big stage in the GC. Stage five, another pretty flat stage. Again, I think one for the breakaway maybe or the sprinters again. And stage six, the GC battle really getting underway at this point with a big final climb. So looking at our sponsor objective for the race, uh, you can see the status at the moment, some mixed results so far um, and our sponsor confidence. Okay, not great though. At the Dauphiné, we do need to try and go for stage wins. Only a one star objective. Hopefully we can get it done though. So quickly recapping our squad for this race. We are led by TJ Van Garderen in the GC. He will also lead our Tour de France GC. We do want to see TJ in yellow at one of these races. We also have Sebastian Milano in the sprints. In addition to that, we have Luis Leon Sanchez, Benjamin Toma, Tobias Foss after winning the Santos Tour Down Under has been called up to the Tour and Dauphiné squad. In addition to Stefan de Bod and Edvard Bersenhagen. So the Criterium de Dauphiné gets underway and you can see some good form but our sprinter Milano not in good form today. So I'm going to try and go in the break and the man for the job is Luis Leon Sanchez. So quite a few guys going for the breakaway including Quinn Simmons who now has 76 hill already by the way. We have four riders up the road, Tim De Clare, uh, Perez and Dia Quintana. We're struggling for energy though and we are being chased pretty hard right now by CCC it seems. So I'm not quite sure what's going on to be fair but we have dropped everyone with Sanchez up the roads. You can see Quintana is behind. CCC have now decided to stop pacing 
and haven't attacked with anyone for some reason. Um, but anyhow, we should take these mountain points at the top. Here we go then, we're about to crest the main climb of today's stage, well in the lead of anyone else, Quintana a minute behind, and the peloton four minutes down on Luis Leon Sanchez up the road. We're going to have to wait for Quintana here because obviously we can't go another 100k solo. So look at this, two teammates up the roads in the Arkea and YouTube cycling jerseys. Honestly, they're so similar. Look at that. Anyhow, we have just two minutes on the peloton at this point. Uh, so no real chance for the breakaway today for poor old Sanchez. So I think we may as well go for this sprint right here with Sanchez. Uh, so let's up the pace right now to 85 on this downhill section. I think we can go 99 and sprint into the final kilometer. I think we should be able to take this with ease and we do just that. May as well take those points right there. So there has just been a fall, including Richie Port behind. Anyhow, we now need to focus on this KOM sprint with Sanchez Quintana on the attack, it would seem. Let's try and take his wheel into the final 600 meters or so. We can try and come around him already. I think it flattens off a little bit to the line. Suits us very much and we will take these points again. I think we can go into the KOM jersey here. So Sanchez has now been caught by the hard chasing peloton. Do need to make sure everyone is staying in this group okay, which I think we are just about for now. There's 2k to go to the top of this climb. I'm going to stay here with Sanchez because I do want these mountain points. We have two available this time. And just 900 meters, let's go up to 87, 90, 99 even. Maybe we'll have to attack with Sanchez. Let's try a little attack right now and we should take those points pretty comfortably right there. So two climbs remaining in the stage as well as 55k. Um, and the reason I wanted to go in the break is because we don't really have a sprinter with Milano and Bersenhagen in poor form. I'm not really sure if they're going to make it in the peloton to the finish. Um, so it's going to be difficult. Let's see if we can nurse at least one of these guys to the finish line in the peloton. So we're now on the next climb. You can see I have moved Tobias Foss to try and protect EBH. Not sure if it's going to work though. I do want to come to the front now as well with Sanchez. Can we try and take these points? Honestly, the pace is so high on these climbs as some teams trying to drop a bunch of sprinters. We can attack away and try and take those points with Sanchez. Uh, we will let ourselves be caught because I don't think we have a chance of going away, but picking up some nice points in this competition right here. So I realize we haven't actually looked at the start list, so let's do it quickly now. You can see some pretty strong teams at this race. We've been at Dumoulin, we've got Fuglesang for Astana, Carapaz leads Ineos, Stefan Kung, Remco actually leading the Quick Quickstep. We've got Shackman, Bookman, plenty of strong riders at this race as you see. So Benjamin Toma has now gone. I think we'll put Milano in Burst and Hagen's wheel, but he's getting dropped. He's getting pushed back. Oh my word, we're getting blocked off by plenty of guys right now with Burst and Hagen. That is far from ideal as Tunison is actually done. Let's go 85, but 1.5k to go on this climb. It's going to be very, very difficult to stay here. I don't think we're going to do it, especially with that block. Milano about to go out the back now, it would seem. Can Boas and Hagen make it though? We're going to try and nurse him over with Tobias Foss. We're not raised about the KOM points, and there you go. Milano is now gone out the back. Boas and Hagen can try and stay here in this group though, and see if we can get dragged back in, as there's only a very small gap to the Peloton. So 6k to go in this stage or even 5k to go right now. I'm not sure who the favourites are in this group. Um, can't really see too many sprinters to be fair. So let's try and move up now with Tobias Foss and of course Edvard Bersenhagen. I think we might just have enough yellow to survive to the line. It's going to be difficult though as especially we're getting blocked off right now by plenty of teams. This is far from ideal. Bersenhagen on also but anyhow... 2.5k to go for our leaders will sprint with Sanchez. We're not in a good position and Bersenhagen isn't going to be strong enough, I don't think, to survive this final little kink. No, he's not. And the stage today will go to Vanna. He takes it with ease ahead of Shackman and Ulysses. Van Garderen won't lose any time today. So Woot Van Aert takes the stage today. A bit of a shame, though, that both Milano and EBH were in poor form. Anyhow, we do take the KOM jersey, so not all lost on this stage.
Okay, so next up, a very difficult stage. No chance for the sprinters today, at least our sprinters, I would suggest. But we do need to make sure we're staying in position with Van Garderen. Okay, so getting underway here, I do want to go in the break again with Sanchez. Looking very nice in that mountain jersey. Let's attack away right here. I'm going to try and protect Burris and Hagen on a plus day. Maybe a slight chance of getting to the end in the front group. Really not sure about that though. Today is mostly about getting Van Garderen to the end without losing any time. So 1k to go right now. Barbero's here. Bahani's here. Cantana as well. We can now go 99. Try and sweep past these guys in the final section of climbing. I think Sanchez will be able to do it yet again. This man on fire in the KOM sprints. He again takes the maximum points up to 25 right now um, in a group of five riders up the roads. Honestly, look at how tough this stage has been so far. Sanchez almost done up the road in the breakaway. These guys have to be struggling as well. Milano almost out the back already. Same for Benjamin Toma. Burst and Hagen already struggling. And a few guys even already getting dropped right now. And just 2k to go now to the next KRM sprint. Only two and a half minutes for this group. Again, pretty much no chance at this stage. Uh, but we do want to take maximum points here. So 1.5k to go and they attack pretty early. Let's grab Barbero's wheel actually. Um, you can see it's pretty steep to the line. It's only getting steeper right now into the final 800, 700. Maybe go at 600 meters. Here we go. Can we come past these guys again? It's looking difficult. I don't think we're going to be able to here as Quintana blocks us. Can you believe it? Quintana unable to take the points. So he blocks his main rival for this competition. This man is going to be in trouble surely. So we're on to the next climb right now. 2.5k to go yet again. Quintana on the front. And I'm not happy with this man after that pretty cheap move from the Colombian right here. Let's come up to AC4. Come to the front. I think we've got plenty of energy for that right now. Um, and I think this climb does suit us slightly more because it does flatten off a bit, um, at least before the sprint. So here we go up to 90 into the final one kilometer. 99. We can sprint right now with Sanchez Barbero though. Very good sprinter compared to these guys. I think he will take these points. Will we get second place? Oh my words. I think we missed out on all the points there. However, Dai Quintana has been dropped. So no worries from me. On to the next climb then. And we're really struggling for energy with Sanchez right now. However, I do think we have the energy to come up to 84 with just 1.5k to go to the front of this group. And again, it's a pretty early attack. We'll follow Barbero this time again. 800 meters as it's a three horse battle right now for these points. I don't think we have the punch though. I think we're going to get thirds. Going to be third again for Sanchez. Just one more point up to 26 now. Let's come up to 85 Barbero on the attack right now. So is Pals. I won't follow him because I know he is struggling a little bit. Right, let's go at 800 meters. I think we're lacking the sprint for some reason. Can we come through this gap right here? It's going to be difficult. And I do think we just about take those points. That is a very good performance right there. Up to 28 points now for Luis Leon Sanchez. So Quintana is now done with 3k to go. We now have attacks from the front three. I'm going to let them go. I'm going to pace on 85. Hopefully we can try and overtake one or two of them towards the top. As Bahani seems to be very tired. It's going to be difficult and I think we're going to go out the back and not take any points right now as Serge Powell is now looking very strong at this stage. Barbero is struggling somewhat. We will overtake him. I think we can go up to 99. Maybe take Bahani as well into the finish. Powell's a bit out of reach and we get second place again with Sanchez taking our total to 29 points right now. So Sanchez now caught by the Peloton, no breakaway remaining. And look how difficult this stage is proving to be right here. All our team are pretty much dead, bar TJ Van Garderen, who is struggling as well, to be fair. Even Boas and Hagen and Toma are struggling. Tobias Foss really struggling. This is going to be so, so difficult right here. So 1.5k to go to the top of this climb. And there goes Boas and Hagen. Sadly, he is now done. Stefan Kung on the attack. We're just making sure we stay here with Van Garderen. Um, and just 90 riders, 70 riders in this group. And there goes Boris and Hagen losing his chance at stage victory today. Let's take position in this group though with TJ. 
So on the final climb today for TJ Van Garderen to negotiate, I think we're looking okay on 84. Uh, our yellow looks pretty good as well. These guys will not come back in sadly um, and it will be 59 or less battling for today's stage. We're looking good on 84 and I am here to react for any attacks if the likes of Fuglesang try anything off the front here. Okay, so into the final 10k and Jakob Fuglesang on the attack for Astana. You can see we're struggling a little bit for water. Not too worried about that though at this stage in the race. We do have an uphill section, so let's make sure we're at the front of this group right now, which we are to be fair. And I do want to follow any counter attacks because Fuglesang, of course, a very strong rider to be going off the front at this stage. Maybe I could try a little counter with TJ at this point as he is now caught. As you can see, a counter by a Venipool, it would seem. Let's try and follow David Godu. That is now caught. Now we can try something with Van Garderen into the final 5k. It's Bardet who follows us. Quite a few guys following us though. So let's sit up in this group with Roman Bardet. It's just two men off the front, it would seem, at this point. And we are creating some gaps here. So this could be working for TJ. Of course, not a good sprinter. Dan Martin now on the attack. We have a group of seven at the front coming into the final 3K of the race. Um, and we're going to have to try and sprint for it against these guys with TJ. The group comes back together into the final climb. So let's go up to 99. Open up the sprint into the final K with Van Garderen. We're not going to have a chance here though. And the stage will be... For the Italian Diego Ulissi, just ahead of Oli Narsen, Stefan Kung taking third place. On we go then to stage three, a flat one for the sprinters. Really hoping Sebastian Milano is in decent form today. The sprinters at this race aren't too strong. You can see the favourite is Tunison today. So hopefully we can deliver with Milano. So fantastic to see Sebastian Milano hitting form at the right time in this race with a plus two day. Really hoping we can get that stage win. Um, I'm just going to keep everyone in the peloton uh, rather than putting anyone in today's breakaway. So you can see the four riders up the road in today's breakaway. But to be fair, they have no chance at taking the win. Just two minutes back to the peloton. Okay, so I've set up my sprint train already. We do have 3k to go to this intermediate sprint. Just one point available though. Definitely not worth it in my opinion. We'll try and conserve energy for the final sprint with Milano. We will try and see who takes that one point up the roads um, as we come into the final kilometer right now. Ball trying to lead things out. Mark Saru going for it. And I think the Frenchman will get that single point. Um, but to be fair, I think they're just wasting their energy at this point. Let's go for the stage win now. So we race into the final 8K of the stage. I've stuck Van Garderen on auto, so he should be fine. We don't need to worry about him. Let's concentrate on the sprint. I think Foss can go up to 90 at this point, maybe. I do want to try and keep Milano in as good a position as possible. We can use some energy gels as well. Milano maybe with 5k to go. Foss doing a really good job, and I think he can now go up to 99 on the front of the peloton into the final 5k. We do need to try and remember it is a false flat to the line, maybe 1% or 2%. Foss done a wonderful job today for the team. Now we can have Tom out up to 99, trying to stay in a good position. We've got Pedersen on our right, Dionysi as well. I'm trying to hold on here with Tom out. 2k to go. We can now sprint. We're getting blocked off very slightly. Boris and Hagen into the final K. And now Sebastian Milano going for the line. And it is a beautiful victory. We can celebrate nice and early. Milano takes it with ease today ahead of Dionysi in seconds. And we get our stage win. There we are then on the podium. We get the stage win that the sponsors wanted. Sebastian Milano, the man to do it. A really nice lead out by Toma and Boerson Hagen today. Milano there to finish the job off. It was Dainese second and Saru in third. Ulysses in very good form this race, it would seem. And if we scroll down, there was a time gap, as you can see. 57th losing one and a half minutes. And you can also see that Garrett Thomas in 66th losing one and a half minutes today. Big surprise to me. I guess Carapaz must be their leader. So we've had a few stages so far. No real change in the GC though. I expect that to change today with a 26 kilometer time trial. 
certainly Vanguard are in territory, although you can see so many strong time trialists at this race. Van Aert, Roglic, Evenepoel, Dumoulin, Campanets, the list goes on. So this is going to be a tricky stage for sure. So Milano wearing the green jersey today, looking very nice indeed. Um, but I am going to focus on the GC guys, try and conserve energy with the likes of Milano. So French TT champion Benjamin Thomas gets underway and it would be nice to take the provisional lead at the finish line. So first time check for Thomas. Let's see if we can take the best time from Godin and we go 7th, 16 seconds down. Difficult on that climb for Thomas. Coming then into the final kilometre with Benjamin Thomas and it is the Dane Mads Pedersen with the best time so far. We do have a little extra energy. Let's go 80, 85, up to 99 into the finish and we go fourth, five seconds down. Very, very close. Here we go then, the man, the myth, TJ Van Garderen gets underway. A decent plus one day. Let's take a look how we are doing at the first split. Ties Banu in 23rd place crosses the line in 15th in the TT. No surprise to see Garrett Thomas with the best time so far. And Van Garderen does go fifth. Not too bad to be fair, but 27 seconds down on Garrett Thomas. So 3k to go for Van Garderen and we do have some spare energy to be fair. I think I'll go 80, maybe even 82 or 80, 85. Let's try 85 with 1.5k to go for TJ Van Garderen. I at least want a place in that top five or even higher. Let's see, up to 90, now 99 into the final climb. So I think we're going to have some yellow left. It's not the best by me and we go second. Two seconds behind Garrett Thomas. If I'd used my energy correctly, maybe we would have the best time at this point. So Evenepoel across the line. He goes second, just behind Victor Campanets with the best time at the moment. Next up though is Primoz Roglic. Can he take the best time? It's going to be pretty close. And yes, he does. Nine seconds ahead of Campanets. I'm really annoyed with myself that I didn't quite use my yellow as efficiently as I could. I think we probably left about 10 seconds on the table. So I think we still wouldn't have won the stage. That goes to Roglic, Campanet second, De Moulin third. And you can see 21 seconds down on Roglic on a plus one day. I think we take that. That's a good sign ahead of Le Tour de France. And so the new GC, obviously Garrett Thomas had lost time. So he stays in 20th position. Roglic goes into yellow and we have a place in the top five. Looking pretty nice with a big buffer to sixth and seventh. On to stage five then, I think the penultimate stage of this episode is classified as a flat one. So definitely a potential chance for Milano yet again today. So only four total Manson points available today. So I think we'll swerve the breakaway with Luis Leon Sanchez, just this in again and try and focus on the sprint. So into the final 15k, those two riders in the break are now done. And we do have a few downhill sections, so we do need to be careful. I think we'll go up to 85 with Sanchez at this point. Again, the finishing sprint is quite steep uphill, much steeper this climb, maybe 3% for most of those final kilometers. So maybe it's going to be difficult for Milano today. Okay, then 7k to go right now. I think we can use our remaining energy gels. Why not at this point? I've put Van Garderen just on Roglic's wheel. I think that'll make sure he stays in a good position. Up to 95 with Sanchez. I do want to be careful with our energy because you can see 3%. Can't have Milano burning any sprints at this point in the stage. Up to 99 uh, with Sanchez right now. 3.5k to go. Time to switch to Tomah. He can go up to 95 I'm trying to be very, very careful with our reds, but 99 right now with Toma, maybe sprint with 2K to go right here. Although we're getting blocked in somewhat. Bersenhagen in a poor position. He can now sprint though into the final kilometer. Milano's going to try, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna be very difficult. We're getting blocked all over the roads and it's not gonna be a stage win. Up the roads, Mike Tunison gets the win. Bonifacio gets second and Bersenhagen actually ahead of Milano in the end. So a very disappointing stage today, to be fair. Bersenhagen, I think, lost the wheel of Benjamin Thomas, which put Milano in a bit of trouble. We do get a top five with Bersenhagen, but hoped for more today for sure. So the final stage of this episode, and it's a big one, over 225 kilometers, and we do have that big final climb. So the GC guys are the favorites today, and we need to try and stay with them with TJ.
Okay then, I have managed to get two riders in today's breakaway and those men are Sanchez and De Bod. Um, I do have De Bod pacing at the moment, Sanchez can just sit in. That is because Sanchez is the man we are going for that KOM jersey with. We can also drop both of them potentially later in the stage to help out TJ. So just 2k to go to the first KOM sprint today and we do have 5 points available. The Bob pacing on 68 and we do have a healthy margin to the Peloton to be fair. And here we go, we now do have attacks. Going to need to respond with the Bods up to 95, maybe up to 99 as well. Maybe try and come to the right. Sanchez trying his best not to get blocked. It's very, very difficult for Sanchez on these climbs. We're gonna try and do it though, up to 99. Try and attack past these guys and the Bods might actually get, uh, take these points. I think he did take those points and Sanchez was third in the end. So the pod looking very strong. Sanchez though up to 31 points now. So another KOM sprint right now, just 2K to go to the top of this climb. It does flatten out somewhat. So that is definitely going to help Luis Leon Sanchez this time around. I think up to 99 with the bod. Let's try and attack with Sanchez right now past our teammate. We will let him go. And there you go, Sanchez takes those points. And I think the bod will get third place as well. Very nice performance there, up to 34 with Sanchez. So cooperation in this breakaway starting to disintegrate as the peloton closing the gap to them. 1.5k to go to this next climb though, just three points available. We will try and take them up to 99 with Stefan de Bod. Let's attack with him. Sanchez can attack now as well into the final meters. It's a strong attack by the Spaniard. Can any of our guys take these points? Madawa will take them again. I think de Bod did beat Sanchez again, uh, but we do pick up one more point right there. So up in the breakaway, coming to the next climb, it's a second cat climb, so plenty of points available. Back in the peloton, it's absolute chaos because we only have Van Garderen and Foss left right now. Van Garderen struggling as well with the tempo. Up in the break, we can go up to 88, I think with the bods, maybe 99 as Madua attacking again. He's very, very strong, of course, Madua. We're gonna struggle to beat him, I feel. Anyhow, Sanchez can now try and sprint for these points. Can we take at least a few of them with Sanchez? I think we're going to get second, so a good performance right there. And some big points available up to 38 right now. So you can see I'm dropping with both Sanchez and De Bod at this point because everyone else from the Peloton is now out the back. Van Garderen really struggling for yellow as well. And we have a false flat section. This is going to be so, so tough. We're going to have to go up to 80 just to stay in this 69-man Peloton. Okay, so we are now coming into the final climb on the day. Just 50 riders in this peloton and Van Garderen is struggling so much with this tempo. Jumbo Visma are destroying things on the front with Van Aert and of course Tony Martin there as well. I do need to try and move up slightly in this group now as we come into the foot of the climb. So 6k to go, you can see I'm literally on 35 just trying to save as much yellow as possible because this is going to be so, so tough to stay with the other main GC contenders. The pace is nowhere at the moment. If I was feeling stronger, I'd definitely like to try something. But here we go, the attacks do start and it's Adam Yates on the front. All the big guns are following. I think we're just, uh, we're just gonna have to go 84 with Van Garderen. Not sure we can go much faster than that on this climb with still 4K to go. Hopefully we can stay with the rest of these guys with many riders struggling with the tempo. The pace does slow, that suits us very much indeed. Let's try and sit up again, 33 in this group now. So again, it's another attack by Adam Yates at the front. Sanchez is still here, he is now gone though. Let's try and go 87 because I think we have just about conserved enough yellow to try and stay here. Let's try and not get blocked. As you can see, I think we're doing a decent job. The pace does slow again, let's come down to about 65. Maybe up to 84 over the top. It's going to be a, a pretty big group, I believe, who will crest this climb at the front. Yates trying to attack again. Let's go up to 91 with Van Garderen. Maybe just sit in for now. Not panic just yet with a few riders up the road. 23 in this group. Can I try and go up to 90 over the top just to make sure we stay here? And yes, it's a very big group. Mads Pedersen just getting uh, dropped over the top of that climb. And so into the downhill now, 7k to go. Van Garderen has survived 
with the main GC leaders. Up the road, we do have Yates and Martin who have attacked. It's going to be difficult for, uh, for Van Garderen on the downhill. Obviously, not his strength. Let's try and finish strong today, though. So 4k to go. Carthy has been dropped by the 4 at the front. I do want a chance at the stage, even though it's going to be very difficult. We're going to have to try and bring them in. Let's try a little early sprint with Van Garderen. I think it will be decided by the 4 at the front of the race, though. Let's see. It's Carapaz, Fuglesang, Dan Martin and Adam Yates looking very good at this stage. Into the final meters, Adam Yates goes for the line. He gets the win ahead of Martin and Carapaz behind Van Garderen. Won't lose any time today, I believe. Uh, maybe losing a little bit of time to the front four. Finishing with a strong top 10 though. So everyone stays on the same time in the end. But Adam Yates takes the stage win. We get a nice 8th place to finish things off today. In a group of 25 who made it over that final climb in the front group. And that does mean we finished today's episode currently sitting in fifth place. Very happy with that with Van Garderen. And I think I've set up Blackwall perfectly to get him into that yellow jersey in the final two mountain stages. So no pressure there, mate. Let's see if you can beat the likes of Roglic, Dumlan and Evenepoel. We also have the KOM jersey with Luis Leon Sanchez looking pretty strong in that competition. Milano also fourth in the green jersey. And of course, Blackwall will be taking on the rest of this race in his next episode. And that starts with a crazy stage seven. That is going to be very tough for TJ. Stage eight as well. And they will really decide the GC. But yeah, make sure you're tuned in to Blackwall's channel where you will see the end of this race as well at the start of the Tour de Swiss. I hope you enjoyed this one today, guys. Drop a like on the video if you did. Make sure you're subscribed if you're new. And tell me what you thought in the comments below. I'll catch you guys next time.